Hey friends, I'm Amy, a health coach here at Flip Your Leaf, and today we're going to talk about the re-challenge phase. So just a quick recap, if you're new to the low FODMAP diet, there are three phases. The first phase is the low FODMAP diet, or the elimination phase. The second phase, which we're talking about today, is the re-challenge phase, and that's followed by the third phase, the personalization phase, which is where you're going to build that long-term customized diet. So when we're talking about the re-challenge phase, the first thing we need to talk about is how do you know when it's time to transition from the elimination phase or the low FODMAP diet into the re-challenge phase. Now, the first thing you're gonna need to do is the low FODMAP diet is two to six weeks. So the first thing you need to do is make sure that you've completed that full two weeks, those 14 days of complete elimination. And this is creating a clean slate for you to test each FODMAP group in. The second thing that we're going to look for is that you have been um, not symptom free, but that your symptoms have been level for at least seven days. So you've seen a shift in your symptoms, they've calmed down enough that if we were to throw a monkey wrench in the system, we were to test something that your body did react to, that we would have a clear indication that yes, this food is not working for my body, like this food in particular is representing a group that I might need to test with caution in the future. So once you've completed 14 full days of elimination and you've seen your symptoms be like nice and stable, nice and predictable for seven days, it's time to move right into the rechallenge phase. And we'll talk about this more in another video, but there are some complications if you're extending your low FODMAP diet longer than you need to, that elimination phase. And so as soon as you've got those 14 days of strict elimination and you've had um, the stability for seven days, it's time to skedaddle out of the low FODMAP diet and get yourself into the rechallenge phase. So what are we doing when we're rechallenging foods? What are we talking about here? Rechallenging, really what we're doing is we're taking a sample of each FODMAP group and we're testing to see how your body is reacting here. So this is not going to be like the be all and end all for that group because who knows, you might've picked the food with the highest possible amount of FODMAPs and this is a terrible example of how you react to that food. Really what we're doing is just seeing like, does my body react at all to this? You know, did I have a mild reaction? Was my body like, oh no, like we are not doing that one ever again, like hell to the no. Um, we're really just trying to get a sampling of what we can expect when we're building our personalized diet. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna pick one food from one FODMAP group and you're gonna test it over three days using increasing amounts of food. So there are a couple of ways that you can do this. You can talk to your health coach, you can talk to your doctor or your dietitian about which serving sizes are right for you. Um, but the general idea is we're gonna start with like a teeny tiny portion, just because if this is like the food that is gonna like murder you, if this is the FODMAP that kills you, like we're obviously not gonna pop a full serving in your body, that would be terrible. So we're gonna start with like a nice, small, easy, safe serving. If you're gonna have a reaction, like it's not like, you know, it, we're not looking for Armageddon here. Um, so we're gonna start with a nice tiny sample, see how your body reacts, if it's totally chill, if there's like a tiny reaction, a moderate, like I don't even know if that was from this food or I just got a bad night's sleep, then we're gonna move to the second day. And on the second day, we're gonna double that portion. So we're not at a full serving yet, we're, we might be at a half serving, you might be at, you know, an amber serving, depending on how you and your healthcare team have decided um, to approach the three step process. Um, but so first day we're going to do a teeny tiny little sample um, so that if something goes weird, if there's not a lot of it in your body. The second day, if all is well, we're going to try a little bit more. Like, okay, like I'm not at a full serving yet, but I'm trying a little bit more. I'm seeing if there's more space in my FODMAP bucket for this particular group. If that's all well, we're going to do day number three. We're going to try a full serving. So now I've got a full serving in my body. How does that feel? Does that make sense? Okay, so after you've done like the three days of increasing amounts, we're gonna do a three day washout period because even if you didn't feel anything in your body, um, not that anything is necessarily wrong, but we wanna make sure that we're really giving our body a chance to rest and reset so that our next challenge is also done in a clean environment. So next phase, same thing. We're just gonna do that whole process again with another food from another FODMAP group. You're gonna work your way all the way through all of the FODMAP groups, there's five. Um, fructans we normally test three times and that's because fructans come in different chain lengths and so you might be fine with a small chain length but you might have a lot of trouble with a longer chain length and so we test things like vegetables we test things like grains and then we test the really really long chains which are things like inulin um, or chicory root and so that one we're going to do three times 
Now, it's important to note that while you're testing each FODMAP group, you're gonna stay in a strict elimination phase. So you're gonna follow that low FODMAP diet all the way through your re-challenges. And that's just because we wanna make sure that we're testing in a clean environment. We wanna make sure that we're not, you know, we don't have FODMAP stacking going on and that any reactions that we have are only to the food being tested. If you wake up and you're not feeling well, you've got the flu, you've had a stressful day at work, um, that would not be an ideal day to test something. You can shift that over one day. Also, if you're noticing that you're nervous about testing or that you're having, you know, a bit of a reaction to foods when you're having them back to back, it's totally okay to break up your testing days and do like a small portion and then a break and then a medium portion and then a break and then a large portion and then a break and then a wash up. I guess in that case, you wouldn't need a break. You could just do your wash up. Um, but the idea here is really just to work with your body. All we're doing is trying samples of food to see what happens. We're being curious um, and just trying to be open to the possibility that not all of these foods are triggering your symptoms. Like it is very rare that somebody would react to all five FODMAP groups. Like that is very rare. Um, so you need to go into this with an open mind and even if you suspect that something might be bothering you, open to the possibility that it might be fine. It might just be the packaging that you normally eat that food in. You know, if you're normally eating avocados but you're eating them, you know, in salads that are full of other things or you're having them with, you know, onions or, you know, in guacamole and things like that, like we've got to remember that we don't just eat foods right? We usually eat them in packaging. And so really approaching this testing with an open mind and sort of the possibility that we might not be reacting to the things that we're reacting to. That's why we're doing this whole process, right? So just to recap our idea for today, the re-challenge phase, we're going to do the elimination phase for two to six weeks, and we are ready to transition into the re-challenge phase when you've completed at least 14 full days of elimination and you've had seven days where your symptoms are nice and stable enough that if we were to trigger your symptoms by accident, that you would know like, okay, like this is a spike in symptoms, this food isn't working for me. So then after we're ready to move into the re-challenge phase, we're going to test each FODMAP group one at a time. And then we're gonna do it in a three day sort of ascending ladder. So we're gonna start with a teeny tiny little portion just so that if you do have a severe reaction, there's like a drop of that in your body and you will be totally okay. Then if that's all well and good, we're gonna to move to a medium portion followed by a full portion of that food. And that's whatever you would normally eat in your day to day life. So once we've done all three of those um, little tests, we're gonna do a three day washout period just to let your body rest and reset so that we're making sure you have a nice clean slate for your next test. Now, just a reminder, while you're doing all of your re-challenges, we wanna make sure that you're staying on a low FODMAP diet except for what you're testing so that we're keeping that nice clean environment that you've created and we know that if a reaction happens, it's definitely from the food being tested and not something else that we've eaten during the day. So I know that might feel really overwhelming. I know that is a ton of information to take in. I have a full article on how to do the re-challenge phase. It blocks out different ways that you can try the re-challenge. Um, it has more information on sort of how to know when you're ready to transition out of the elimination phase and into the re-challenge phase. And it also comes with a free download for you to download re-challenge foods if you need help figuring out sort of what you wanna to use to test each group. The download's totally free. You can grab it in my free resource library and I'm gonna link the article and and the download below in the description box. But before you go, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You are gonna get a ton of information about IBS, the low FODMAP diet, and how to make your body feel like home. I'll see you in my next video.